I would like to direct your attention to two most important points which are recorded as facts in the scripture that we read today that I believe are relevant for us today. The first of these important facts are recorded in the words which we have in Luke chapter 8 where the man that was possessed with devils and the Lord Jesus Christ commanded the devils to come out of him and was found finally clothed in his right mind this man straightway wanted to follow the Lord Jesus Christ and be with him now our Lord Jesus Christ said to this man no you go and tell your countrymen and family of all what the Lord hath done for you. Now that is the first point. I want to bring this in tonight for what I have to say. And then secondly, in the chapter of Luke's Gospel, we have set before us an account or a parable or a story which the Lord Jesus Christ put forward where he explains that there was a certain man that prepared a feast and that he begged certain men, his friends, to come to this feast and enjoy the supper. And of course they all said yes they would come. But when the feast was prepared the master of the house sent out his servants to go and invite those that were willing to come for the supper is ready. And then we have three excuses given. First of all, we have one that says that uh, he bought some oxen and therefore he cannot come to the supper because he's got to try them out to see if they're any good. Now, have you ever known a man to buy an oxen or a car or anything like that? To buy it, to spend money. And then say, it. well, he can't come to some because he's got to now try out to see if it's any good. I tell you, that is an excuse given. The second is that we have the account where a man says that he's married a wife. Therefore, he cannot come. So he makes an excuse. And then, of course, there is another excuse, some legal excuse. And so, when the servant goes back to the master that sent him out, he relates to the master all these excuses that is given. And the man that prepared the supper was angry. Because at one time they said they didn't come. But when they've been, they do not come. And then, the master of the house says to his servants, now you go out, go into the highways and the byways, go into the streets of the city and compel them to come in. And so he goes, he says to the master, there still is room. He says, now go out into the highways and the hedges. Go out and compel them to come in. So he goes out. And they come. And our Lord Jesus Christ says this They that were bidden shall not taste but the supper which was prepared. Now, of course, this you see, unless you understand the ministry and the purpose of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, will not make sense uh, straightway until we go into it. I don't intend to go into that. But what I want to bring to you from these texts of Scripture which I've brought to you are two points. First of all, when the Lord Jesus Christ saves a man from his sins, there is a change of nature and a change of heart. And that person wishes to follow and go after the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord Jesus Christ said no, not yet. 
You got it. Tell all the Lord has done for you. And then we then come to the uh, second illustration. Look into that in a moment. I don't know why am I bringing it to you? Well, the first thing is this. Those of you that have known me, have known something about my past and history, will know that several years ago, the Lord God did a remarkable thing in my life. He saved me from a course of drug taking, thieving, villainy, and violence. <coughs> and straight away, I wanted to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. I hope to relate to you tonight the events surrounding this call by the Lord Jesus Christ, my history, the effects of the Lord speaking to me, so that it may be a benefit for anyone here that is seeking the same salvation and the same God and the same Lord Jesus Christ. And then I want to draw attention to this portion in Luke's Gospel where it speaks of the servant going out into the highways and byways to tell and compel men to come to the marriage supper or the supper prepared for men. And the reason for me doing this is, first of all, because I could well understand there may be criticisms leveled at me for writing to the newspaper to inviting my ex-friends and colleagues to come and hear of all what the Lord Jesus Christ has done. I want to show to you that what I have done is entirely biblical, is according to the Word of God, and I believe is of God. Because I'd like to relate to you the circumstances of what moved me to so call upon my friends and speak to them of the Lord Jesus Christ. So then, we come here today, and all I wish to do today is speak to you of what the Lord Jesus Christ has done for me. And what he has done for many sinners, and many such people, and for what his purpose was in coming into this world, so that it may be a benefit to those that are seeking life and seeking what to know his life all about. Because I know this. When I was a young man, well, I'm still a young man, but in the eyes of you young children, like an old man, but when I was a young man, I used to wonder why was man made? What is the purpose of man? I could not understand the purpose for our existence. Why is it that men are born into the world? How is it that there is so much disorder, illness, sicknesses? Mothers have children which are deformed. How is it that if God is, that these things can be? And how is it that death is the end of mankind? I could not understand. Why? The world was as it was. And if there is a God, how it is as it is. And I'm sure that this will be the question upon many people's minds. And I put it to you, and I believe it is the case, that it is the responsibility of gospel ministers to answer the questions of those that are genuinely seeking God. They have the answers in the scriptures if they will give themselves to read and understand and seek God in prayer. Well now let's come to the matter. We gather together and I wish to bring to you some of the things which the Lord Jesus Christ has done for me. Now some of you don't know me but some of you do know me. And for the record and for the benefit of those that do not know me, I was born in 1949. So if you work your arithmetic out, you'll work out my age. You can perhaps do that while I'm speaking. 1949. 
I was born in Oldham. I have a brother that is two years older than me, and I have a sister now that is 23. My parents, or my mother, I believe, used to send me to Sunday school.